Module 35, the 19th century and the 20th century. I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. I am going to speak on the 19th century and the 20th century. The Yangchao school was the last group of Qing painters to make a significant contribution to tradition. But in 1911-12, when the Chinese revolution finally took place and the Qing dynasty was overthrown and China's hostility to Western ideas was replaced. Painting of modern urban themes in the traditional Chinese ink medium was promoted. Since 1949, China has become intensely proud of her own cultural heritage. Today, more care and resources are gathered to study and preserve the ancient monuments and works of art. The Yangchao school was the last group of Qing painters to make a significant contribution to tradition. By the beginning of the 19th century, Qing culture was so set in its forms and attitudes that it was almost impossible for a painter to break through the conventions and put Chinese art upon a new path. However, the gentleman painters of the 19th century, such as Tai Hsi, who was active from 1801 to 1860, typical of 19th century taste was the Shanghai artist Jen Po Nian, who was active from 1840 to 1895. He painted some interesting portraits of scholars and merchants but his landscape and the word of flower painting were for most part executed in vigorous and somewhat tasteless manner which had marked influence on the 20th century admirer Hu Shu Pi Hung and Wu Jiang Shi who was active from 1844 to 1927 had such masterly techniques and so through a knowledge of old scholarly styles that they were borne along by the sheer momentum of great tide of tradition that had built up behind them. Auspicious Flowers is a hanging scroll and at present in the Singapore collection is Wu Chiang Chi's painting to be mentioned. In recent years, the palace tradition flickered once more into the life in the work of three members of the former Manchu imperial family, Pu Ju Pu and Pu Chin and Pu Shi, who between them practiced a wide range of academy and literary styles. But as before, it was only the literary who were able to infuse any life into a slowly petrifying tradition. In the 20th century, the Manchu rulers of the Qing dynasty resisted every effort to awaken the sleeping giant that was China. Well knowing that reform would lead only to their own downfall. Moreover, Chinese painters were confident that their own tradition however static was far superior to the academic oil painting that was all the best then had to offer. But in 1911-12, when the Chinese revolution finally took place, the Qing dynasty was overthrown. China's hostility to Western ideas was replaced, especially in the coastal cities by an eagerness to adopt Western ways of living, to write in the Chinese of colloquial speech instead of the classic style and to develop modes of artistic expression more suited to modern society. 
in the year 1916 a Cantonese painter who had studied western art in Tokyo started a movement to promote the painting of modern urban themes in the traditional Chinese ink medium other painters who returned from Japan to set up their studios in the French concession of Shanghai which became the center of China's cosmopolitan culture for the next 3 decades in 1918 the end of world war 1 made it possible for the young artist to fulfill their dream of studying in paris after staying for several years in japan and germany hosu p hung who was active from 1895 to 1953 returned to china Hsu P Hung belonged to the next but one generation of painters after Wu Chang Shi painted in completely different style Hsu was one of the youngest painters who had traveled to Europe and he may be regarded as one of the leaders of those who introduced western art into China in 1919 He went to France for the first time on a scholarship and stayed in Europe for 9 years interrupted only by a short vacation to his homeland as a student of Ecole des Beaux Arts in Paris he received a sound training in all aspects of art which were normal in Europe but totally new to him on his return to China He painted in oils still unfamiliar in China his works noted for such european characteristics as anatomical precision and the use of central perspective and chiaroscuro throughout the 1930s he concentrated on painting of historical events according to europe forms however he was best remembered for his ink paintings of galloping horses which became world famous galloping horse by husu p hung is a good example it is ink on paper hanging scroll and at present in the palace museum taipei the galloping horse is realistically proportional and lively and yet the work has a spontaneous and almost abstract character these horses he painted at the same time as his historical painting for he seems to have recognized that something was lacking in his oil painting though he had thoroughly mastered the technique oil appeared to him as inappropriate medium for traditional chinese subjects perhaps despite his years in europe he was still deeply rooted in chinese tradition his works nantlets are the climax of the synthesis of european and chinese painting traditions during the period hosu p hung and liu hia su born in 1895 returned to china as pioneers of the modern movement and established art schools in french pattern in nanking and shanghai their paintings though in oils and in western style were conservative the hangchow academy under lin fang min who was born in 1901 became the center for a more experimental painting that was chinese in feeling and modern in style cormorant it is a detail and at present in the collection of prague narodny gallery is one of lin fang min painting the art which began to flourish in big cities was just as academic as that of traditional painters the only difference being that now the
the medium was not Chinese ink but oil paint. More significant historically, if not always so satisfying aesthetically, is the work of those painters who have responded to the challenge of the 20th century. Many modern Chinese artists have wrestled consciously or unconsciously with the problem of how to preserve Chinese traditional painting and yet make it a true reflection of modern life. The first concentrated move in the direction was launched by Cao Qian Fu and his brother Qi Fang who in 1912 started an art school in the Kuang Tung for the express purpose of revitalizing the traditional style by incorporating into it such modern western devices as perspective, shading and chiaroscuro and by using it to depict modern urban life realistically. The movement known as Ling Nan Pai Cantonese school was however too self-conscious and too much influenced by modern Japanese decorative realism to be an unqualified success. However, during the 20s and 30s, it had a considerable influence upon the artists of South China. While since the People's Republic came to power in 1949, its combination of visual realism with traditional technique has brought it into high favor with the authorities. At the same time, more radical artists found in the woodcut a cheap and effective vehicle for denouncing the social abuses that plagued China during the early part of the 20th century. The woodcut movement was launched by the great writer Lu Husun, who was active from 1881 to 1936. Its inspiration was primarily Russian. But Chinese wood engravers using a technique with a very ancient history in China soon surpassed their Russian models. The woodcut has since remained the chief medium for social and political propaganda. In the hands of few artists such as Huang Yung Lu, his woodcut painting, The Music Lesson, Woodcut London Private Collection has achieved truly lyrical quality. His other woodcut dated to 1948 is titled Harvest. In the painting, the two girls are carrying baskets on the back with wheat crop. They are picking the crop of wheat from the ground. The double challenge of Western oil painting and Russian woodcuts acted as a stimulus to upholders of the Chinese tradition. In Shanghai, the scholar painter Huang Ping Hung who was active from 1864 to 1955, revived the independent ideals of the Wu school literati. An example of the hanging scroll dated 1953 in Singapore collection is a landscape painted by Huang Ping Huang. Huang Ping Hung. At the start of his career, Huang Pin Hung, who came from Anhui, concentrated on landscapes of the Anhui school. However, an element of stiffness, lifelessness, and conservatism is present in the paintings of Anhui artists as Jiao, Yunlong, and Hongren. That is why, in time, 
Huang turned to other models, notably Kun Kan. Huang's early work was painted out of the glare of publicity, for he believed that ability to truly understand nature and understanding indispensable for painting good landscapes came with maturity, namely after 40. His mature landscapes are lyrical and monumental. His style characterized by wavy brush strokes. Journey to the Yellow Mountains is dated to 1943. Ink colors on paper. It is a hanging scrawl signed with the name Pin Huang and sealed Museum of Kolog. Here, the Yellow Mountains Huang varies a motif which already had moved generations of painters, especially the Anhui school of the 17th century. This dense painting style is, however, clearly distinguishable from the sparse works of, for example, Hongren. Huang works can be divided into four groups over three main periods. The three periods are the imitative period from youth until 50, the travel and painting phase from 50 through 80, and the late phase, the 12 years until death at 92, during which he was losing sight but continued to paint. Two styles mark this last phase, that during which sight impaired. He visualized scenes in his mind's eye and painted them without really being able to see them clearly. And the style of his final years, when after a successful operation, he was able to see again and began painting the wild almost abstract landscapes of his poor blind years, again in his earlier style. Many of his works are dramatic, gloomy landscapes that reflect the contemporary mood of despair at the sad fate of a once great China. Chi Pai Shi, he was active from 1863 to 1957, though was a son of a carpenter because he seemed to be the embodiment of the new vigor that had flowed into traditional painting since the beginning of the 20th century. A man for dominating the art world of speaking, he on the whole remained a wood carver and carver of seals all his life. He began to paint when he discovered a copy of painting manual of the mustard seed garden, but his spontaneous style did not emerge until he was in his 60s. In Peking, the venerable bearded figure of Chi Pai Shi painting a photo seemed a reincarnation of the innocent genius of Pata Shan Zhen. Besides this, the artist also produced landscapes for a short period. Landscapes album painting Shanghai collection is a good example. Chi Pai Shi was also noted chiefly for painting of flowers, fruit, insects and fishes, which he executed with the strength and spontaneity of a true individualist. When he was 88, he painted his still life with wine pot and chrysanthemum, which is typical of his vigorous simplicity. The inscription on it reads, the thing for prolonged life is wine. His other leaf from album painting, ink on paper, dated 1930, is titled as Cabbages. In 1949, when the Chinese People Republic 
came to power, Chi Pai Shi was honored not only for his great age but humble origins. The towering figure of modern ink painting was the great artist Chi Pai Shi. He painted a large number of landscapes during 1920s and 1930s using the impressions gained from his five lengthy journeys through his homeland. The objects portrayed in his landscape are often radically simplified so that a simple cone, for example, represents a mountain. His almost nave houses and boats are similar to those seen in children's drawings. In fact, in his bold use of paint, indicating the sky simply with broad ink strokes or representing forms by areas of tone. Without outlines, Chi belonged to the avant-garde of Chinese landscape paintings. This simplicity, almost a form of primitism, grew out of the need for direct and immediate expressive style. Whether he was painting on a fan, on album leaves, or on great hanging scrolls, his subjects were landscapes. And though he himself prized his landscapes highly, it was his flower picture that established his reputation. His views winning hardly any acceptance. His numerous depictions of insects and lobsters also enjoyed great success, some of them internationally. Chi Pai Shi, who lived for almost 100 years, was painting in 1950s. The great master of the Shanghai school, who had known the imperial period, the republic, and finally the radical upheavals of a socialist state. His late works were done in the years when China was becoming an industrial society, and there is a touch of defiance about his flowers, birds, and lobsters painted in the manner of Shanghai school with his own characteristically varied style. An example is of chickens painted in 1950 and at present in the SMBPK Berlin Museum. It has an inscription saying painted in the summer of 1950 by the 90-year-old Pai Shi. His another creation was branch with winter plum blossoms at present in SMBPK Berlin Museum. This painting too has an inscription saying painted by the old man Chi Pai Shi in the hall of Jiping, floating water plant in Beijing, signed by Pai Shi. Here in these two paintings, his use of both outlines and the boneless technique in which forms are created by areas of ink can complement each other in the same picture. In works he painted at the advanced age of over 90, he depicted the classic subjects of the scholar painters such as the Four Noble Friends, Plum Blossom, Chrysanthemum, Lotus and Bamboo Leaf by Leaf or Petal by Petal in Single Brush Stroke. Using generously applied wash on the side rather than the tip of the brush. Chi's late work contains variation on themes that he had painted throughout his artistic life. He renders a subject in the quick sketch like conveying the notion of a stem, a flower or a leaf 
with a single calligraphic brush stroke. His use of color embraces every shade of ink and only his flowers are painted in the natural colors of the plant itself. In the works of Chi's old age, plants and animals predominate. As if had given up painting, his beloved landscapes now no one could appreciate them. They lived on, however, in the work of some who came after him, his children in the spirit. In 1937, when Japan invaded China and began to occupy the coastal cities, the modern movement changed its course. Painters and students were driven far into the interior. Cut off from Paris and deprived of oil paints, the modernists rediscovered their own land and found new possibilities in the traditional ink medium. The work of this period often has a tentative exploratory character and the characteristics of this could be seen in the early paintings of Chao Wu Chi or Chao Wau Ki, born in 1920. Chao Wau Ki, a Chinese painter who first went abroad to Paris in 1946 and is making a significant Chinese contribution to the international modern art. His painting of 1948, Birds in the Branches, is a good example. Tseng Yu Ho is another artist now living in Honolulu. His landscapes of 1955 is a unique example in which significant Chinese contribution is visible. The other Chinese painters living abroad were Lu Shao Kun in Hong Kong, Liu Qiu Sung in Taiwan, and Cheong Shu Ping in Singapore are making a significantly Chinese contribution to the international movement in modern art. For even when their work appears more abstract, it is like that of the late tongue eccentrics, never entirely divorced from the natural world. And the fact that we can read their abstractions as landscapes gives them an added dimension. Seem to be exploring for the first time ground that has long been familiar to the Chinese painter and calligrapher Painters are discouraged to adopt abstract expressionism as the Chinese brush technique in both painting and calligraphy already has an abstract expressionist elements and hence Chinese has no need to depend upon a foreign style. Li Kojan born into an illiterate family of peasants in Jiangsu and began studying at the Academy of Arts in Shanghai in 1923, where he learned oil painting as well as traditional Chinese art. He was a modernist trained at the Hangzhou Academy and was active during World War II in painting propaganda pictures. Two scholars in a wood, about 1940, ink and color on paper, Honolulu and at present in Hawaii collection is a delightful painting. Later, he became a teacher at the Peking Academy. After the war, when he came to Peking, he went to pay respect to Chi Pai Chi, where he saw his works after looking through his Chinese style paintings for some time in silence, the old master remarked, All my life I have admired above all the works of Pa Ta 
Sha Jin and Shi Tao. Now that I have seen your pictures, I am sure one day you will be their follower. That Li Ko Jan who had spent the past six years as a realistic war artist could express himself so naturally in the manner of 17th century individualists show how deep rooted and at the same time how vital the Chinese tradition is in the 20th century. Li Ko Jan, he was active from 1907 to 1989. Although he had thoroughly mastered the technique of oil painting, he preferred ink as his medium, particularly after the early 1950s painting, both polychrome and monochrome landscape and figures in the quick sketch style. Figure and landscape paintings were his chief contribution to an exhibition held in 1945, which also featured works by four other major artists of the period, including his teacher Lin Fang Min. Li's landscape convey the atmosphere of the seasons, the times of the day, and the weather. In his works, building ships and figures are often rendered with a few quick strokes in what seems a rather naive style. His landscapes sometimes combine both realistic and imagined elements, combining the actual locality and the products of his own mind. Lee sketched out of doors and his lively walking in spring in the Chi Chang garden is a typical example of his work about 1955 ink and color on paper it's a hanging scroll and at present in the national gallery prague this garden was frequently painted and lee interprets it as a scene of contemporary everyday life Visitors in blue jackets move through the spring landscape of the garden which is just breaking into green leaf. The use of light and color, particularly the red of the columns, show that Lee had mastered western techniques which his clear depiction of light and shade, the reflection of the trees and rocks in water and the construction of perspective. Late in his life is the hanging scroll of the magnolia branch dated about 1934, ink color on paper, hanging scroll and at present in the museum of SMBPK Bull. In this picture, Chi refers to himself in the seal as old by Shi. In later inscription, he signs himself Old Man of the Mountain. This painting of magnolias, which is based on a firm diagonal, is characteristics of his flower paintings. The petals painted in light, delicate tones, the black stems painted with swift, firm strokes. Chi's painting is typically a flower painting in the quick sketch style. The light petals formed by transparent outlines with a dab of color at the center and the tight unopened buds capture the very essence of these delicate transitory blooms. In 1949, with the establishment of the People's Republic, both the modern and the traditional painters got the prestige and security. Yet the contemporary art in China has been far from being monopolized 
by social realism which though useful for propaganda purpose was nevertheless a foreign style an example is of a painting by pan jen dated 1946 woodcut titled they also live in a city since 1949 china has become intensely proud of her own cultural heritage today more care and resources are gathered to study and preserve the ancient monuments and works of art china is fully ensured that its art and history will not surrender to the crudities of socialist propaganda or to the wilder excesses of some modern western artists the hang chow academy under lin fang min who was born in 1901 became the center for a more experimental painting that was chinese in feeling and modern in style